Hey folks, it's Mary, aka Mercy Triumphs, and I'm here with another episode of Slow Crochet. Uh, this is episode, I believe it's 005. Um, today I'm going to show some works in progress, finished objects, and some new um, projects. And I also want to talk a little bit about a kind of collaboration that I'm going to be jumping on board with. I'm pretty excited about it. So I want to start with looking at some of the works in progress that I, um, I had from last week. Now, one of them is still in progress. It is my afternoon at Pemberley dress. Um, it's really hard to see progress on this because it is pretty slow going at this point because there's just so many shells and you know one of the reasons I go so slow is that each of these shells is nine double crochets in there and I always count them every single time it's like I make them I count them as I make them and then I go back and I double count them only once have I figured that um, have I found an extra stitch on there but even as I'm like listening to people uh, other youtubers or watching a show or I just I don't want to run the risk of like making an extra stitch in there and having to go and frog back so um, progress is slow but sure um, I do let's see here I think it's this marker here I put a little st stitch marker right here the last time I tried it on and I said hey I need about 12 more of these shells total before I'm ready to try it on again because that ought to get it to a length that at least covers the slip that I plan on wearing under this. So we're at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right. <laughs> so maybe four more rows of shells and then I'll be able to try it on. I'll just try to take some pictures of that and um, then I'll be able to kind of decide do I want to keep going longer? Do I want to do a slit? Do I want to finish it off at that point? But anyway, there's my slow going, but very well loved um, little cotton dress that is a uh, is on the go. So yay! I I do want to get this finished. There are some bigger projects that I want to get started on, um, but I don't want to start another big one until this one is done. So there's that work in progress. Um, another work in progress that I had from last week, I did actually finish, and it is. Chewbacca! It's Chewbacca. Um, wow, this little guy sure has a story. So um, the book that I used, I believe it's just called Star Wars Crochet. I can put it underneath. I followed the pattern to the best of my ability. Now, I think in my last video I said that he required a cat brush or a pet brush. We don't have cats or pets. So I was just trying to use like a fine tooth comb to get him nice and fluffy. Um, but I think he turned out all right. Um, the story on this is that the child who requested that I make this, it turned out that child actually wanted me to make it as a late Father's Day gift for my husband. So I got, every time I was sitting down, Mom, are you working on Chewbacca? Mom, are you working on Chewbacca? And uh, there was such joy and such excitement as Chewbacca was coming together. So finally, there was an evening where my husband was out of the house and I was working on Chewbacca, I was finishing him up, and I put him all together and I finished his little bag and his bandolier, and I said, look, he's done! And that child took one look at Chewbacca and his face just clouded over. His arms are too long. He's not, his arms are too floppy. I said, oh my goodness, I've worked so hard on this thing for you. Um, so he said, I don't want to give it to daddy. You need to fix the arms. I said, no, I, I, I followed the pattern exactly. I'm really proud of how he turned out. And I did, uh, I posted pictures of Chewbacca on Ravelry and I looked at other people's um, Chewbacca's and it, it, he looks pretty similar to other people's. He there is a greater conversation to be had about commissioning artwork, commissioning someone to do something that you can't do for yourself and the limitations of that. Because in the, in one sense, my son commissioned me to make Chewbacca as a gift for his father. But when you commission someone, you don't have complete control. So 
there were so many tears. I mean, this has been a big emotional process. This little bitty dude has had so many big feelings attached. Were we going to give him to daddy or not? Well, finally, I was like, you know what? I've been hiding this from my husband. I just want him to see because I'm proud of him. So Chewbacca da does now live with daddy. But this boy, this child, he said, Mommy, can you teach me to crochet? I said, sure, honey, I would love to. Um, and sure enough, that child is learning. Here's his little chain and his first little bits of single crochet. Um, he is learning, but he wanted to learn because he said, I'm going to learn to crochet, and then I'm going to make Chewbacca right. I said, okay, son, all right. You do that. So we shall see. Anyway, I do think there's a long story about little old Chewbacca. I'm thankful that he's done. But you know what? I'm going to take that library book back to the library before any other request for Star Wars Amigurumi's come in. So that's that. Um, I also, um, I finished a little baby hat. You know what? Let me take you to the past and we will... Uh, We'll see, see that hat there. Hello, people of the future. This is Mary of the past. I wanted to show, and but again, you'll be uh, not seeing. This will be already gifted. The shower will be over. My tiny little, well, it's not tiny, I guess, but uh, I aimed to make it a size like six months. Uh, happy little baby hat in that cobalt blue and the glacier at the bottom. I did. Um, just a basic double crochet beanie. I think I started with um, 10 in the center, 10 or 12, and then just increased around and then did a couple of rows of regular double crochet and then some um, post stitches. So yeah. I will take you all the way back to the future now. I'll see you then. All right, welcome back. Keeping on the theme of small things for small humans, I have a, a toddler birthday party coming up. So what could I do for that? They said, don't bring any presents. I thought, I'm going to make something. So I made a crown. This is just from that um, leftover scraps of um, Lime Brown Pound of Love in the color Maze. So this has not been washed. Um, I, I know that when it, it washes, it does get a lot softer, but I thought maybe the stiffness would be okay for a little girl. Um, I am going to put some little um, pearl buttons on a few of these points to make it a little bit more like a crown. Um, but that was started and finished kind of on a whim, but I wanted to include it because any finish is a good finish. So in terms of starting new projects, I did start two. Now first I want to show you, because at that, at that same baby shower, I won the prize for knowing uh, the nursery rhymes. Um, and I won this little planter, which is really funny, but I thought, hey, he's the perfect size for some crochet thread. And it just so happened that this is a project I was working on. So I have been uh, kind of ogling the Sophie scarf, which is knit. And I really liked just the little scarflet kind of thing. And I've been trying to figure out a way to mock that in crochet. Um, and I have not been able to. So instead I saw um, I believe in knit, it's the seed stitch where you like, you line up your knit and your purl stitches on top of each other, like back and forth. And that reminded me of the lemon peel stitch in crochet. So um, using crochet thread and then using um, Premier Cotton Collage, this is the blue color. I'm using um, browns in here, but it's tucked inside there. Um, anyway, that's what I'm using to make this beautiful kind of striped effect. And it'll be just a quick little, once it's done, it'll be a quick little um, neckerchief kind of thing. And I really like how this is turning out. Um, I, I wasn't sure if I would like holding it double with crochet thread, but I really do. Now, this is a vintage spool. Sorry for the rustling. Aunt Lydia's crochet thread. And that's from Hobby Lobby from way back in the day, it looks. I'm, I'm really liking how it's turning out, holding it double with this because it gives it a little bit more structure um, and makes it a little bit wider. And then I'm using, for this project, I'm using my size 
F, which is a 5 or 3.75 millimeter hook. So that's that project. I'm not sure what I'm going to call it, um, but it is my project that I can do very simply and mindlessly. So if I'm listening to a child read or if I'm sitting in the car and my husband's driving us somewhere, I can do that. I've already done the hard part, which is the increases, which didn't turn out to be that hard. I took notes on it, so maybe, maybe I'll write that up. Um, but now it's just lemon peel and just making sure that I stack my double crochets over my single crochets. Love that. Um, my next work in progress that I started, something I've had my eye on for quite a while, um, and it is a pattern by In the Garden Yarn. It's a free pattern. I believe it was released in like 2019. It's called, pardon my Swedish or Dutch or German, Höstfagring, 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 um, or the Autumn Garden. It was a crochet along and it called for sport weight yarn and it created kind of an asymmetrical shawl. I decided that I was going to use my Chloe yarn, which is um, from Hobby Lobby. And I decided instead of, um, I, well, I decided to modify the pattern. So um, this yarn is a four weight and I'm using a J hook with it. So it's much larger already. And I'm only, so in the actual pattern, um, you do a half and then the, you, if you can imagine a mirror image of this, so it kind of goes into like a, a wedge shape. And then at a certain point, you drop one side the wedge and then you just complete into like a very long obtuse, obtuse triangle. So I am only doing one side the wedge. I know I don't have enough of this yarn. I only have two balls of it, two balls of my Chloe pick of the bunch. Uh, I don't know how much of this I'm going to do, if I'm going to do the full thing or not, because it's already quite long. But I intend to wear it more as a scarf. So watch this space. I, I'm really loving this pattern. They have a really great set of, um, of charts. And so that's helping me a lot to, to kind of intuitively, like I, don't, I, I am concentrating on it, but I don't have to concentrate so hard. Um, and it's also a very well-written pattern in terms of going back and figuring out your stitch counts. And they'll always say like how many stitches on each side of the, the center. So for me, that I'm not, since I'm not doing the, the mirror image, can just count along here but I'm loving how it's turning out it's really beautiful I, again I've wanted to make this pattern for a long time in fact I think I started it a lot like it feels like years ago at this point it must be years ago when I was just getting back into crochet so it really is just those three little works in progress for me right now the dress the shawl and the little kind of neckerchief or necktie um, and I'm really happy with that. I'm excited because I have enough variety that I can work on things in different times. And yeah. But I'm about to have something kind of take over for a minute, and that is um, participating in a Christmas in July uh, yarny, vloggy collaboration. Um, the collaboration is one that I first heard about through the Yarn Joy podcast, and then um, No Name Crochet or no catchy name rather, is also participating as well as one other um, yarny vlogger. So I heard about this and at first I thought, oh man, I don't even want to start thinking about Christmas. But then I remembered last year how I was trying, I was working on a Christmas afghan and then I had all these little presents that I wanted to make and it was right the last minute. So I thought, you know what? Actually, one of my Christmas and holiday goals in general is to be more proactive in making sure that the actual holidays are very peaceful. Like I've already decided in other ways that I need to downscale. Like instead of doing four different types of Christmas cookies, just do one or two, for example, right? Um, so I am gonna be participating. So in the month of July, I'm gonna post every week about the different things I'm gonna be doing. I'm gonna be making some Christmas ornaments and some other decorations. And I'm not gonna use a book, um, but I am gonna do some patterns that I've found over the years that I really enjoy. And that way, then I'll have a stockpile of little handmade Christmas ornaments when it does come time for Christmas. And then at that time, I'll be able to work on something that's really enjoyable and I won't have the pressure 
of trying to get things done at a certain time. And um, so I will be joining up with that. Awesome. All that to say, I think links are now active in the description for whatever I reference, whether it's patterns or other vloggers or other YouTubers. Um, so that's that for my works in progress, new beginnings, finished objects, and um, and that Christmas in July collaboration. So I'm really excited about it. And that's all I have for you. So thank you so much for being with me today. If you enjoyed spending your time with me, feel free to do all of the standard YouTube things, the like, the share, comment, subscribe, bell notification, all those kinds of things. If you didn't like what you heard, if I'm not really your cup of tea, thank you so much for listening this long. I hope I will see you again soon.